The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We have been discussing Chapter 4, Gnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga, Yoga of Renouncing Action in Knowledge. So we have seen in the beginning of Chapter 3, Bhagavan had said that there are two paths always available for a seeker to seek the ultimate knowledge, the Gnana Yogina Sankhyana, Karma Yogina Yogina. For the yogis, the karma yoga, and for the gnani, the gnani yoga. So, chapter 3, we discussed karma yoga. This is where one needs to start, Bhagavan said. That if you are engaged in this world of activities, in this rajasic world of activities, then you have to start with karma yoga. And karma yoga simply says, act with the balanced mind without expecting any particular fruits of your action and act efficiently. That's basically karma yoga. Remain balanced in any situation. Do not react overly in any situation. But once you start with that, that's karma yoga. Purpose of that is to purify your mind and intellect so that you can function very efficiently in this world. But what type of action I should be performing in that manner was described in chapter 4, in the beginning, Bhagavan said, you should know what is karma and what is akarma. You should know what is vikarma, what is akarma. So you should have some basic gauge to decide actions are appropriate or not appropriate. And then Bhagavan said that when you reach a point where action seems inaction and inaction seems action, you now come to understand what action is all about. And how do I get to that point? Bhagavan said, Yagnarthat karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandhana. You get bondage from your action in this world because you are acting in this world as an individual trying to compete with the rest of the world. It's creating sorrows and unhappiness and fears and greed and jealousy. That's because this concept of duality that I am an island by myself, the world is out there to get me. But once said, that you overcome by performing your actions in the field of yagna. The yagna is something you're not doing for yourself. You're sacrificing something for greater good. So if you go to Hindu temple and when their Panditji is doing havan, Every mantra starts with idam na mama. This is not mine. Up till now I thought this is mine, but right now I'm offering it for the greater good. In the holy fire, that's a sacrifice. Something I always thought is mine, I offer it as does not belong to me anymore. That we call it charity. The money which I thought is mine, I write a check and send it to a non-profit organization, and say, now it is not mine, it is yours. You do whatever you need to do. So that's the act of yagna. Yagna is to sacrifice something which you thought is yours. But you came to the conclusion that really does not belong to me. I heard one of the CNN executive retiring and he said, you learn, earn, and then return. Learn the knowledge, how the business works, then earn. Make money and then return, return back to the community. And that's what most of us, one way or other, do. Because we have seen that when a person dies, he cannot take anything with him. Acquire things, things that's his own, and then eventually gives up, leaves everything here and goes away. So Bhagavan said that that concept 
you have to understand even while acting in this world and therefore you have to act in the spirit of yagna and the sphere of yagna so that you come to realize the oneness so bhagwan said once you perform this you will get the brahma gnana so i have this translation of gnaneshwar maharaj gnaneshwari this chapter is actually titled in gnaneshwari as brahma yagna prasansa brahma yagna prasansa nama chaturtho adhyaya so here we say gnana karma sanyasi yoga na there are books have seen which simply says gnani yoga so chapter 4 is about knowledge knowledge about your own self and how to get it so the two paths which bhagwan had initially described that is always available right from the beginning of this universe for a seeker to realize the truth is karma yoga and then gnani yoga karma yoga when you are not ready yet very rajasik perform karma yoga but then ultimately you have to have gnana the knowledge what it is all about why my actions are not my actions and when i come to realize it become inaction is no longer any action which is belonging to me so in verse 33 it says sarvam karma akhilam partha gnane pari samapyate bhagwan came to that final statement saying o partha all the actions good bad and ugly that you had been performing or you think you had been performing once you know the knowledge gnane parisamapyate they get all resolved once you achieve that knowledge what is the knowledge is we would learn that brahma arpanam brahma havihi brahma agno brahma hudu everything that i perceive in this world that i consider to be something other than me is also not different than me is the same entity which makes me who i am the very same entity makes the world of plurality what it is once i come to that conclusion bhagwan said sarvam karma akhilam gnane parisamapyate all actions which i am either very proud of or very afraid of that i may have to pay for them those actions all will get resolved so how do i get it so in last verse 30 for bhagwan said the only way to get it is to someone who has realized this knowledge i can only learn something from someone who has experienced it if i am dreaming in a suffering in my dream only other waker can see that i may be going through a nightmare and wake me neil neil what's happening are you dreaming are you having a nightmare another dreamer cannot do that another dreamer who is also dreaming his own dream he cannot wake me up from my dream only a waker who is not dreaming can see that i am having a nightmare and can wake me up so bhagwan said go to a guru go to a person you may not call him a guru you may give him another title but go to someone who has experienced this knowledge experienced this truth that there is no duality in this world the world is the manifestation of the same reality the duality is created out of my own ignorance about the nature of this universe in prakriti there is multiplicity but prakriti is one prakriti itself is one entity but in that there is multiplicity just as i as one person but i have multiple limbs in which has different parts and different functions but i know that all these limbs are nothing but me and therefore there is no conflict ever my right hand is not fighting with left hand and left hand is not fighting with my right hand because there is a unity of thinking that oh, we are all one and that that knowledge you can only get it from a great person who has realized this atad vidhi pranipate ne pari prashne na sevaya you have to put your own efforts you can't really get it just by thinking about it you have to put your own efforts with that humility that i do not know right now what i know is creating more conflict for me 
is creating the sorrows, unhappiness, fears, jealousy, greed, all that because I think the world is out there to get me and I need to take care of myself. So once you know the Tadvidhi Pranipatena Pariprasnena, by inquiring what is real and what is unreal, what is my true self and what is not my true self, Sevaya, by serving the teacher, Upadekshinti te gnanam. Gnaninaha tattva darshinaha. And if you find that person, if you are sincere, you will find a person. And if you are sincere to know that, that teacher will point you in the right direction, will, will give you the direction how to find your own self. You have to find yourself, but you will find a guide to get to your destination. Yajgnatva na punar moham evam yashasi pandava. Is this something, Bhagavan, I'll know one time and then I'll forget it. There are a lot of things you have learned before, but I now have forgotten. It's of no great value. And Neil, do you know calculus? I've learned in, in my college days, but I know nothing about it anymore. The so Bhagavan said, no, this knowledge, once you know, you will never get confused like this. You are right now confused about whether to fight or not to fight this battle. Knowing that knowledge, you will never get confused again. Yena bhutani asyeshena drashasi atmani athomai. That is because right now, my problem is that I see that world is competing with me. And therefore, I'm getting confused about how to protect myself. And that's what is creating confusion. In Arjuna's case, my people are there and I have to kill them. I have no problem killing others. Only my people I'm worried about killing them. But once in this I and mine, once dissolved, you will not have any problem. Two people facing each other in a dark alley are afraid of each other because one doesn't know who the other one is. So they hide from each other because they think the other person is out there to rob me. But once they realize that other person is my friend, then all the fears are gone. So that identification is the unifying factor. Now Bhagavan said once that identification takes place, that yena bhutani asheshena drakshashi atmani athomai, that you will see that all beings are in your own self. The self which I consider my own self is not limited to this body, mind and intellect, but it is all pervading and is encompassing everything. That teacher will make you realize that yourself is that supreme self where everything is contained in it. And you will see that in me, me, Bhagavan said, Krishna himself. You will see in the God, all the beings, and you also said that's nothing but your own self. That knowledge when takes place, all the fears will be dissolved, all the negative tendencies of your mind will dissolve, and you will be free from all the problems that belong to you. So Bhagavan said, Api ched asi pape biha, sarve biha papa kuttamaha, sarva jnana plave naiva vrujinam santarishyasi. So now I come to that point of gauging my own capability. Am I capable of achieving this? And 99 times of 100, we come to the conclusion that that's for the sannyasis, that's for somebody, not for me. It may be, but I don't know whether I'm going to get it in this lifetime or not. But we're going to say, don't worry about the lifetime. because You do not know what your lifetime is. This life is not the only existence you have. Bahuni me vyatitani janmani tavachajani. You and I have spent many, many lives before. We never perished. And we will be there forever. So therefore, time is not of any, any consequence here. Neither your own qualification. If you consider yourself to the best among sinners. So even the criminals also have categories. The best and the worst, you know. From a stupid criminal to the most intelligent criminal. All the jewel thief movies I used to love in my younger days. Because the jewel thief is not an ordinary person. He is so intelligent. If you consider that you are the worst of sinners, 
then also it does not exclude you. Because the sin is nothing but this, the other aspect of karma. The same karma, if it is utilized in a proper field, it becomes merit. If it is in a wrong field with a wrong attitude, it becomes sin. So all you are doing up till now is, what you consider your sins, is you are applying your ability to act with a wrong attitude. Those attitude and the consequences, experiences are creating negative impression on your mind. Therefore, you consider yourself sinner. You cannot be a sinner because you are part of that pristine reality. Amrutasya Putraha, we are all the sons and daughters of the immortality. And therefore, you cannot be a sinner. But you may consider yourself to be a sinner because of your own judgment about what you have done. You see, even then, you will achieve that liberation if you apply yourself and get that knowledge. Sarva jnana plavainaiva vrajinam santarishyasi. By the raft of this knowledge, this knowledge is your saving grace. Once you have this knowledge, all the sins will be dissolved. Once I wake up from my dream, all the sins of my dream are of no value, of no consequence. I get up and say, oh my goodness, I did not do any of those. I was dreaming. I did not commit any murder. I didn't cheat anybody. I didn't do any of those. I was not part of the insurrection. It was all dream. I'm completely relieved and liberated from all my fears in my dream. But once it, so you may consider yourself to be incapable of achieving this state of liberation, but knowing who you are, you will be liberated from all your sins. All negative balance in your account will be wiped out. It's like Joe Biden saying, all student loan is now forgiven. So I may have $100,000 in loan account or $10,000. Once it is announced that all student loan is forgiven, everybody's balance becomes zero. Whether you have paid 90000 out of 100000 loan or 10000 left or all 100000 is out there to be paid. Once it is forgiven, all that is gone. Every balance becomes zero. So Bhagavan is saying that once you realize that you are not this limited being, all the problems of your limited being, all the papas of your limited being will be resolved and you will be liberated from that. Yatha idhansi samidh agnihi basmasat kurute arjuna gnana agnihi sarva karmani basmasat kurute dhatha Just as the fire makes everything into ashes, where there is no form and color difference, there is no multiplicity in ashes. Once thing is burnt, whether the wood or the plastic all become one and the same. Gnana Agnihi Sarva Karmani Basmasat Kurute Dathai. This fire of knowledge will burn all your actions. We have been acting since beginning of our existence and we have been accumulating karma fala. We have seen the karmas in three categories, Sanchit Karma, Agami Karma and Prarabdha Karma. Sanchit accumulated acts in my balance in Karma Bank. Prarabdha Karma is the one which I am experiencing right now. The karmas which have matured and I am experiencing, there is nothing much I can do I have to experience it. We are product of our past. And who we are right now, there is nothing we can change about it. We need to experience it. I went to architecture school and became architect. You went to medical school and became a doctor. We cannot change that. The prarabdha I will face. But sanchita karma and agami karma, once I realize I am not this limited self, but once there will be all be dissolved. Your balance will become zero just as the student loan. If it gets forgiven, your balance becomes zero. All your actions will be forgiven because they did not belong to you in the first place. You thought they belonged to you. Therefore, you are paying. But once that knowledge takes place that I am not the doer and I was never a doer, then the balance of actions becomes null and void. So Bhagavan said, Gnana Agnihi Sarva Karmani Basmat Kurute Tatha. 
my goal is to get rid of all my liabilities and sorrows and bhagwan said the only way you will achieve it is by knowing that you are not the doer once the knowledge takes place by the help of a guru by the help of a gnani by questioning who i am is this body me my this mind me this intellect me once i come to the conclusion who i am but once said you will know that nothing belong to you and therefore all your actions will be dissolved into benign action we'll stop right here if you find this podcast helpful please support it by donating any amount by going to the episodes website at neil but dot podbean dot com or at chinmaya richmond dot org thank you om sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kaschit dukh bhag bhave ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ